Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today I am ready to give you guys a full review of this guy right here. This is none other than the No Knives Grace, a collaboration between No Knives and Brandon Corbin of Corbin Steelworks. And I gotta say, when I did the unboxing of this guy, when I got it in hand, there were some things that really, really impressed me, and there were some things that raised some pretty big questions, mainly and most importantly, this blade shape. How good was it gonna work for me in my day-to-day? -day? So I actually carried this thing for a week straight and uh, put it through some pretty darn good use. I even wiped it off, but there's still some, uh, you can see some wear on this blade, but it has definitely held up to most of what I've thrown it at, but the big question was how did it feel? How did the blade perform? Uh, were they easy cuts? Was there something that gave me trouble? We're gonna go over all that, and uh, also just give you guys the regular Wayne Sharp World review of this knife. But first, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 7.2 inches, a blade length coming in at three inches, and a blade thickness of 125 thousandths. Blade material on this guy is M390. I could have swore, where was that? It was on the blade, there it is. Oh, that's, 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 that's really cute. I actually just noticed that. Uh, M390 there, uh, really nice font they use on the M390. I, I like that, that's very different. Um, anyway, going into a Tanto blade shape, a very, very aggressive, gnarly Tanto with, of course, that compound grind, a handle length of 4.2 inches, and a handle thickness at 500 thousandths. Material on this guy for the handle is titanium and micarta, but there are some other options. We'll go over here in just a second. Uh, we have the frame lock locking mechanism as well as a user of a right hand only tip up carry. A weight coming in at 3.8 ounces, and the prices on this guy varies from $325 to $375. Now, I'm also going to be uploading this guy uh, roughly a week or so before the actual pre-open pre-order opens. So you'll have all that pre-order information down below in the description of this video if it's something you want to get in on. And uh, let's take a look real quick at the options you'll have. I could just read them all off to you, but I found that it works better to just have a visual, hold it in front of you guys. Uh, you can pause the screen right there and take a look at it. But as you can see, uh, four different options. And uh, yeah, I think they're all gonna be pretty darn good. The prices and all the details are right there for you. So I figure that's just a better way instead of me, you know, running over some words that you'll have to go back and forth on. So I like the visuals better. I'm a visual guy. So there you go. Now, uh, speaking of visuals, let's do some size comparisons and uh, see just what this knife compares with some other uh, rather popular knives. Here we have the uh, Protec Malibu. And we also have the uh, CGRB Pyrite. That's a pretty popular knife nowadays. I, a lot of people probably know that. And what you're going to notice with this knife is the, the, the overall length is pretty comparable with a lot of knives. The real difference is, is the blade length. And not even so much the overall blade length, but the actual length of the blade sharpened edge that's usable. Because you have a 3-inch blade length. But you have a little over three inches of sharpened edge. But again, a lot of that sharpened edge is on this uh, rather unique uh, front end of the Tonto that is uh, pretty aggressively sloped back and uh, unusually longer than uh, the other half of the blade, which you usually don't see a lot on Tontos. Uh, a couple more real quick. Uh, here is the Kaiser Drop Bear um, as well as what do we want to put up here? Ah, let's do it. Another good Kaiser, the Kaiser Original. Um, so there, yeah, it's actually bigger than the original and basically the same size or same length of the drop there. So there's that. Now, let's get back into this knife and just this knife and uh, tell you just what I think about it after some good use. This is the most use I've put a knife that I reviewed through and mainly because this blade, like I said in the unboxing, a lot of times I kind of just write blades like this off because I feel like eh, it's not going to work in my day to day. Looks great, but it doesn't really, it's not going to, it's not going to work well enough for what I need it for. Um, and to an extent, I was proven wrong, but there was a couple other instances where I think I was, uh, I was right in saying that, but we're going to go over all that. And first we're going to start with this blade which is a uh, very dramatic and downright gnarly Tonto. And uh, yeah, I don't really have any issues with the aesthetics of it. I think it looks great. 
Um, it, there's a very nice deep hollow grind here out towards the front of the blade and at the top you have that nice robust flat grind that does come up to a rather, I don't know if I would call it dainty, obviously I didn't use it hard enough to snap the tip, but I wasn't really trying, nor did I want to snap the tip, because this is not mine, it's just a loaner for review, so I gotta be somewhat nice to it. Um, but it's still, I think it's gonna have some okay strength to it, as long as you're not, as long as you're aware of, uh, you know, blade geometry and what you should and shouldn't do with a very dainty tip. But with that being said, there's also something very important you guys need to know about this blade because there is a significant, significant change coming to this, as well as a couple other changes that I think are worth noting. Um, first, we're going to go over the big one, and it has to do with the blade. As a matter of fact, it's, it's really the blade shape. And uh, insert another visual here. As you can see, what's going to be happening um, is they're going to be adding uh, more to kind of the front belly of the blade. They're going to give it a little more roundness, um, turning it from that to that, which I really, really like. I think that's going to do wonders for some people, and I think it's going to look a lot better. They're even extending the, uh, the flat portion out there a little, which I think is a great idea. I think every change they're making to this knife is only going to make it better from what you're seeing in this review. Also going to be extending the jimping, as you can see on the thumb studs. And even more so, this lock bar access. You know, when when I first got this, I said, ooh, I like this lock bar access because, you know, it's there. And it, it, as is, it's very easy to get into this knife. Well, they're making the lock bar access even better. They're going to increase the lock bar access, as you can see here. So, um, love, love, love all these changes that you are seeing to this guy. I think that's awesome, and it's only going to make this knife better, especially that change to the blade, which I think is very, very important. It's going to help, and it's also going to add a little, just a little more strength to that tip area with that little bit of belly and kind of widening this point up just a hair. Really, really like that they're doing that. Um, so, now the blade itself. What does this blade excel in, and what did I have trouble with? Uh, what I really enjoyed about this blade was I found that it was just as easy to... Um, to open packages with this blade. You know, the, the, the tip of the blade is all the way towards the back, which can sometimes cause a problem. But if you're just opening a package, all you do is instead of do, going, and for me anyway, instead of holding it like this, I'm basically just holding it like this. So I, a little bit of a little bit of a twist in my wrist, but nothing, nothing that I really even noticed, to be honest, because this blade is so razor sharp. Once it touched whatever cardboard, paper, tape it was going to cut, it, you know, it kind of went through it like a knife through hot, or a hot knife through butter. So, uh, it didn't really give me any problems. Again, just with that tip farther back, you got to adjust the kind of the wrist setting, but still worked fine. And it gave me no issues whatsoever for opening packages, letters, uh, breaking down boxes in certain ways, and as well as precision cuts. It's very nice to use for precision cuts, especially if you're kind of going to cut something up like this. You can use this choilish area, but be careful. You won't, This is like a choil for your fingertip, not your finger. You don't want to give a full finger down there. That, that would cut you, but you, your fingertip fits in there very nicely. And uh, it allows, especially when they add a little more jimping up there, you'll have even a little more grip. And uh, you can do some pretty good precision cuts with this, depending on like, the angle you're trying to cut with. Um, so I do like that. What this blade was not great at is the longer cuts. Like if you're going to cut through a long piece of cardboard and as you're cutting, your, you know, your cutting motion is kind of rounded a little. When you hit this point, y you can kind of, it still works and it's really not... It's not a, like a bother, but it's not a very fluid, smooth, easy cut. I would much rather have just a long drop point without that break for the longer cuts, especially through something like cardboard. But if you're just breaking down a smaller box, I actually broke down some very big boxes and some smaller boxes with this. The smaller boxes were pretty easy, no problem at all. But the longer the cut, the more problem you're going to have because you can't necessarily keep that one cutting point. Like when I go start cutting through cardboard, and let's just say I start cutting like right in the middle of the flat... As I stretch and as I move back away and through the cut, the, the cutting point is going to be moving up, 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 up. And then it comes down this way. And then once it hits this, you kind of cut through, you, you, you run out of blade real quick. Um, so I don't love that. And the choil area, you got to make sure that, you know, you're not starting right on the choil because then you'll get caught up in this little choilish area here. You want to start more towards like, you know, maybe like where my fingertip is right here, where my, where my fingernail is. You're going to start about there and just move up on the blade when you're making the cuts. 
Um, but it is a very sharp blade. It's a very attractive blade. And it is a very useful, useful blade for these smaller types of cuts. I think it's really good for someone who has very minimal, regular type of EDC use. Opening letters, packages, uh, potato chips, you know, food packaging, stuff like that. All that's good to go. Um, but for the longer, heavy utility cuts, if you're working in a warehouse, you're breaking down boxes all day, probably not going to be your jam. You, the blade's going to work that great for you. Um, going into the handle. Um, from an ergonomic standpoint, it's pretty good. It's not great, but it's good. It's not enough to where I don't have any issues that really are like, oh, whoa, that's a red flag. I don't like it. Um, a couple things I do notice that I'm not a huge fan of is down in this area here, my pinky is resting kind of over in this area and how, depending on how my hand sits during, during each hold, because, you know, sometimes I can be choked a little farther up where it's not that big of a problem. Sometimes I can be moved just a little down and then my fingers are landing on this area right here, which is not a hot spot because it's chamfered really, really well, but it is kind of a, uh, a, a, I don't even want to say pointy, but it's, it's, it's an area that you will notice and you won't necessarily like the way that feels. So I don't think you're going to be using this knife hard enough for this to give you like blisters or a hot spot, but it's an uncomfortable point in the handle to where I really wish this was just a rounded handle here with kind of a hidden lanyard hole instead of this backspacer. That would have been really nice, but I can only assume that this probably helped maybe help reduce cost a little with just an in backspacer insert instead of like a little more detailed hidden backspacer. Complete guess on my end, but um, I don't know. I, there was a couple other ways I think that this could have been worked where it would have been more comfortable from an ergonomic standpoint. Point. Um, but the actual fit and finish of the handle is very nice. It's Riot. I mean, would you expect anything less than the best from Riot? Because you are paying a premium price. Nice six shooter pivot, phenomenal fit and finish on this inlay. Transition line does not exist. You don't feel it. Super, super smooth. Very, very nice micarta. Love the grain, love the detail in that. That is phenomenal. You got your Null Knives logo down here. You got your Corbin Steelworks logo right here. Um, I think they did this as best as they could without, you know, cause you guys know, I, I call out of the absorbent, like the real extravagant branding out. Um, this is pretty mild for me. It, it, it hides in pretty well since it is just kind of like pressed in there, but it's also bead blasted. There's no color difference, no finish difference on the surface to like make it pop. So it's pretty tame, pretty quiet. So I don't have as big of a problem with it as I do other approaches that some uh, brands take when it comes to doing stuff like that. So it could be a whole lot worse, and it's, it's okay. Um, I do like this clip. I just wish it was shorter. I really wish this clip was a little shorter. Um, it feels really good in hand, though, and it works great. And I got to say, I was walking through my office a few days ago, and I caught it on the edge of the door, and I was really, really worried. I, like, totally bent the clip back. Um, but it took a really hard impact very well. And as you can see, um, I don't know if that was from that. I, I felt like it caught above, so I feel like you would see something right here. Um, but it took a significant impact and uh, held up very well, didn't bend, didn't get all weird on me. So really like the durability of this clip, and I do like the looks. It does look fantastic. Um, fr from, an, from an aesthetic standpoint, this knife is really kind of a home run in my opinion. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, the blade to handle ratio may throw a few people off, um, but it's really not as far off as you think. It's just how thin the blade gets up top. It kind of looks like less of a blade, even though you still have a good... Um, I, you gotta have, it's a three inch blade length, but with all this, I bet you got a little over three inches in cutting length. I probably shouldn't have measured that, but I did so many other things with this knife. I kind of went off the norm of my review path for this. Um, but overall, um, in terms of the fit and finish and handle and all that stuff, it's really good. You get into the action and it's, it's Riot. I feel like I don't really need to get into the action because I've never handled a Riot with poor action. Riot, 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 Riot. What is wrong with me? Riot. Um, Riot's action is always on point. I, I cannot remember a time when I took a Riot knife, Riot made knife, whether it be the Riot branded or something like this where it's OEM'd. Um, I've never, never had an action issue. And the same goes with this. It, it's very smooth. It's very nice. Excellent detent. Blade flies right out. Um, no issue whatsoever. Makes some very good sounds and it's just very easy to kick out. And uh, just a fun knife. It's a fun knife to fidget with. It's a fun knife to look at and show people. And it's a pretty good knife to use. I definitely wouldn't write it off if you're worried that this knife won't work for you. I get that it's a hefty price, but 
This knife wasn't made for everyone. This is a knife that I think was made for people that want something different, that want to stand out. And I think they definitely accomplished that here with this. Um, I think they did a bang up job of it. Um, it's not practical, but it's not supposed to be, but it does work. So um, I took away a lot of positives from this. I, th I, I think a lot of my assumptions were kind of right, but also kind of wrong. Like I said, I was surprised and uh, surprised in a good way. So overall, I really do like this knife and it comes down to, you know, what are you looking to use this knife for if you buy it? Is it just going to be a, a cool show off piece that you'll use, you know, lightly for just regular light EDC stuff? Or are, do you really have a plan for your next knife purchase? Like, is this going to be, is this going to be the box destroyer at work? Or is this going to be, you know, something for a more, you know, heavy style of use? May not be for you, but I do think it's going to be for some people. And I think a lot of people are going to really, really like this. Um, I am one of them. This is the Null Knives Grace collabed with Corbin Steelworks, and I think they did a smash-up job. Let me know what you guys think of this review. Really, really hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and until the next one, I'm out.